after tomorrow's State of the Union speech. Joining me now, Congressman Jamie Raskin. He's a Democrat from Maryland serving on several investigating committees. Congressman, thanks very much for taking the time this morning. Delighted to be with you, Jim. I, I want to ask you this just in the simplest terms, because I think it's clear to voters now what, what Democrats resist or oppose from this president, including money for the border wall. Uh, but some folks at home might not know what Democrats stand for, what, what positive legislation or, or efforts will a democratically controlled Congress look to get done in these next two years? Um, well, we got elected on a positive platform of change for the American people. Um, we're fighting for prescription drug reform. We want to give uh, the government the ability to negotiate uh, with the large ph pharmaceutical companies for lower prescription drug prices because um, there are tens of millions of Americans who are having a hard time making the ends meet because of the prescription drug problem. We want to lower people's co-pays and deductibles. So we've got a health care agenda. We've got an infrastructure agenda. We want to increase wages for the American people, and that's very much uh, on the horizon for us. We have um, our H.R. 1, which is a democracy reform platform to eliminate gerrymandering. We want independent redistricting commissions in every state in the union. The Republicans last week, unfortunately, in a hearing we had came out for gerrymandering and said that they wanted to keep redistricting okay. in the hands of politicians. So we've got some very big uh, policy differences, and we want to focus on that. And, of course, we're not for shutting the government down. We're for making the government I, work and keeping it open. I get that. But for all of those things, you're going to need Republican support because they control the Senate. And I just I wonder, when you look at the debate over the border wall, uh, I mean, you really have Democrats digging their heels in on this uh, as much as the president. And, and to be fair, the, pre the president has reduced his demand from a wall from sea to shining sea, as he has often said, to a barrier for a few hundred miles. A and yet the Democratic leadership still saying not a penny for any barrier, though they voted for that in the past. I just wonder, uh, what's to, to stop folks from believing you're not being just as political as the president on this? Well, let's start with this. We've got a, a number of big ticket policy items where we've got real bipartisan consensus. Take, for example, uh, a universal criminal background check on all firearm purchases, which is supported by more than 95 percent of American people. But under Republican control, they wouldn't even allow us to have a hearing on that, much less a vote. We're going to move that through the House and we're hoping that the Senate allows a vote on it and that Mitch McConnell will bring that to the floor. We have uh, a big majority of the American people and a big majority in Congress that supports the DREAM Act, which was, you know, another clear common sense measure which was frustrated uh, under Republican control. Now, on immigration, we've put billions of dollars, more than $9 billion, into border security, and we've got a proposal for uh, improving cargo inspection, filling 3,000 I get all vacant. that, but... But you well, know the president, he's digging his heels in on, on a wall, and we're, we're facing a deadline in, what, 11 days. And without yeah. agreement on that, you got the possibility of another shutdown. I'm just curious, we, we, the president's given some ground here. Will Democrats be willing to give some ground, give some money, perhaps yeah. $1.3 billion, uh, as approved previously, for an actual well, barrier on the border? Yeah, well, we have invested in uh, border security and fencing before, and uh, we're very willing to thicken the... Uh, defense of the border. And we've actually shown that we're the ones who are willing to sit down and compromise without shutting the government down. That's one thing the American people have completely rejected, the idea mm -hmm. that you shut the government down in order to try to achieve advantage in a policy dispute. And we completely reject that and the American people reject that. But I think that there are clear grounds for us to get to yes on this. We never had a problem before. It's the president uh, who seems sort of zealously and polemically committed to a border wall and nothing else, uh, and he didn't raise that. The Republicans controlled the House and the Senate right. for two years. It wasn't until we beat them by more than 10 million votes and picked up 40 new seats that they decided suddenly this was, you know, a take right. it or leave it offer, and then they shut them, there the were, government over it. It's not acceptable. There were opportunities before. I want to ask you about the, what's going on in, in, in the state of Virginia right now. Uh, Ralph Northam, the governor, as you know, uh, holding a cabinet meeting this morning, you have called for his resignation. You, says it's a, you say it's a time for moral clarity. I wonder if you're concerned that if he does not resign, does this damage Democrats' attempt to draw a clear line between their party and Republicans on the issue of race? Well, I think there is a clear line between our party and their party. You know, when the, the president said after the debacle in Charlottesville that there were very fine people who marched under 
the Nazi flag and under the Confederate battle mm -hmm. flag. Uh, I think that that drew a very strong moral contrast between that party and our party, uh, which looks and sounds and acts like America. We are the greatest multicultural, multiracial mm -hmm. democracy that's ever existed. And I think that what Governor Northam is finding is that the political leadership has got to be held to the highest standards, and he can act most honorably at this point by stepping right. aside, letting Lieutenant uh, Governor Justin Fairfax become governor, and he can continue to be involved in the party and he continue to work to... Uh, make things good, but it, the the images are just too searing and too divisive and polarizing. And we think that they should get rid of Steve, um, you know, Steve King, uh, the congressman from Iowa, who's continually engaged in racist provocations from on the House floor. And we just don't think there's any place for this in the 21st century. Right. Uh, final question, if I can. It, it, it's four months and two days since Jamal Khashoggi was murdered brutally. CIA says likely with the approval of the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and yet the Trump administration has not penalized or sanctioned the Saudi government since then. There's been a lot of talk on the Hill of doing something about it. Uh, that seems to have quieted down. I haven't heard his name mentioned on the Hill in some time. What are Democrats doing to ensure that the Saudi government is held accountable uh, for this murder? Actually, we just had an event, I think it was last week, maybe it was two weeks ago, uh, about the Khashoggi assassination and about making sure that Saudi Arabia uh, is held accountable for what they did, also for ending uh, the Saudi war in Yemen, which has been uh, an absolute atrocity against uh, civilians there. So I'm glad you raise it because human rights has got to be uh, the central commitment of American foreign policy, and the president has completely abandoned our role fighting for democracy and human rights, and now our country's in bed with the dictators like the homicidal crown prince of Saudi Arabia, mm. Putin in Russia, Duterte in the Philippines, Orban in Hungary. We've got to get back on the side of the democracy movements and those leaders who are fighting for democracy and human rights in their countries. Congressman Raskin, thank, thanks for joining us.